The draft plan was released on Wednesday at the final stakeholder workshop held at the Herdmanston Lodge in Georgetown. The plan details the standard operating procedures and assigns responsibilities to various state entities in the event of an oil spill. It also states that Regions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are most likely to be affected by an oil spill, particularly if it occurs offshore. It singles out Region 1 as the most at-risk coastal region given the location of current and upcoming oil exploration and production. The plan is expected to be finalized by next month, after which it will be submitted to Cabinet. This was explained by Director of the Civil Defense Commission, Lieutenant Colonel Kester Craig, at the opening ceremony of the workshop today. After we developed the plan, we also circulated to all of you here for comments, but the plan was also circulated back to Rapramputek and United States Coast Guard. And they've also they've provided us with some additional comments. And with the comments coming out of this workshop today, we will be working to have this plan finalized by the first week of November, after which it will be submitted to Cabinet. When we complete the plan, rather, we'll be having several orientation seminars so people could understand their roles and responsibilities. We'll also have exercises, tabletop exercises, functional exercises, full-scale exercises, because this document is going to be a living document. It's not going to be a document that we're going to take and put down and just wait for something to happen, then make the adjustment. Craig also spoke about the assignment of responsibilities within the plan and the fact that its guidelines were modeled off of other plans. A key feature of our oil spill response plan that is different from several other plans that were developed in the Caribbean is that our plan catered for both onshore and offshore oil spill response. So you have section dealing with roles and responsibilities for persons or organization that would have responsibility for an oil spill that is occur onshore and offshore. The plan was also developed following a number of guidelines and templates, and these include the International Maritime Organization Manual on Oil Pollution Contingency Planning. We also review and use as a guide, as a guide the Regional Caribbean Island Oil Pollution Response and Cooperation Plan 2012 for the Wild Caribbean region developed by Rap Ramputek. Also present was Minister of State Dawn Hastings, who lauded the work done so far in developing the plan. She also encouraged the participants to put their heads and expertise together during the workshop. Participants included representatives from government ministries and agencies, as well as the police, army, and coast guard. Gerald Bryan, The Evening News.